Hello and welcome to Premiere Gal. Here on this channel, you'll find everything you need to know about creating better video and photography. I create tutorials in Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, even Audition, and I do some gear reviews and camera technique videos. So if you're new here, I'd encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I publish new tutorials every week. In this video tutorial, you're going to learn how to add motion to your photos to create unique and stylish slideshows. So the first step is to create a sequence. I'm going to make my sequence 1080 by 1920, 30 frames per second, and I'm going to give it a name called slideshow. Now drag your first photo into your timeline. Using the effect controls, position and scale the image until it looks best in the frame. Then go to effects and search for Gaussian blur and double click to apply this effect to the image in your timeline. And from effect controls, you can increase the blurriness to give it more of an artistic blurry look now let's create a second sequence and let's use the same dimensions as last and let's call this photo one. This is where we're going to build the Polaroid look. From the essential graphics panel, use the rectangle tool to draw the Polaroid frame and you can change the color fill to be any color that you want. Then I'm going to use a handwriting font called Desirel. It's a free font that I downloaded from Font Squirrel. And here you can type in a caption. It can be anything that you want. And then I'll move it into place and then center it horizontally in the frame. Let's now go to the six second marker just by typing in six seconds into the time code here. And then let's expand this graphic layer out to meet the six second time code marker. I'm only doing this because I wanna be able to have six seconds to work with for each photo in the slideshow sequence, which you will see in just a few minutes. Now drag the same photo we dropped into the previous sequence into this photo one sequence on top and let's make the layer the same length as the graphic layer below. Then go to effects and search for crop and drag and drop it onto the photo clip. Now from effect controls, you can position and scale the image into the frame as you like. And then using the crop tools just below that, you can crop the top, the left, the right, or even the bottom of this image until it fits within our Polaroid frame. Right now, although this is black, it's actually a transparent background. And to show the transparency, go to the wrench tool from the program window here and turn on the transparency grid. And now you can see that it's actually transparent. To give it more dimension, let's add a shadow to the graphic layer. From effects, let's search for a radial shadow. And here you can drop it onto the graphics layer. And you can move the circle target here in the program window. This actually adjusts the light source of the radial shadow. So I'm going to move it to the left and you can see that this casts the shadow off to the right. Then you can adjust the shadow color, the opacity, distance, or the softness of the shadow. I'll set my distance to about two and a softness to 20. And I like the opacity at 50%. So now we have our first complete Polaroid photo look. And all of the photos that I'm using in this tutorial are from Envato Elements. For just $19 per month, you can get unlimited design, photo, and web assets. And coming soon, there will also be stock video, After Effects, and Premiere Pro templates within the Envato Elements library. You can still purchase individual assets from Envato Market if you want, but Envato Elements is just the alternative subscription model, so you can pay less per month for unlimited assets. And I'll put a link to Envato Elements below. Now here is where we will nest the first photo into the slideshow sequence we created. From the project panel, drag this photo sequence on top of the first photo background and make it the same length as the background layer below. Now this is the fun part, it's where we're going to add the motion to the image. Since I like the Polaroid to seem a little off rotation, I'll set the rotation of this Polaroid to be about seven from the effect controls panel. Then I'll make the scale 90 so it fits better in frame. So this is the exact location I want the Polaroid to end up at. So now we need to set keyframes to create the animation. Let's pull the CTI here to about one second in and let's hit the toggle animation button to set a keyframe to the position, the scale, and the rotation of the photo. 
Then let's pull the CTI back to the beginning. Let's rotate the image a bit to create some rotation movement over time. Then select the motion tab here, and this will activate transform tools around the image in the program panel. Now you can use your selection tool to pull it up off frame at the top. And then lastly, you can reduce the scale to zero. So now when we play this back, it goes from small to big, it rotates slightly and it moves from up to down and it ends on the point, which we wanted to have a scale of 90 and a rotation of seven. So to make this smoother, let's select the last three keyframes here, right click and select temporal interpolation and ease in. And what this will do when we play it back, you can see that the photo eases into position much better than it did before. And if you want the animation to be faster, simply lasso and select the last keyframes again and just move them to be closer to the first set of keyframes. Now, if we play it back, it's faster. And if you want the animation to be slower, just lasso and select them again and move them to be farther apart. And for the animation out, it's just the same thing, but at the end, just move the CTI here near the end of the clip and hit the keyframe buttons here on position, scale, and rotation. This will set the start point, then move the CTI to the very end of this image clip, and we can rotate it again and move it down off screen this time at the bottom and scale it back down to zero. Now, when we play it back, you have this dynamic movement from beginning to end, from top to bottom. And it's up to you to decide where you want these images to come in from. So from left to right or up or down or diagonally. So I'll do one more photo here again, just to illustrate a left to right movement. And you can do this to as many different photos as you want. And the reason why I can't copy and paste these keyframes is because each image has its own unique size if all of your images were the exact same then you can do that but i say it's better to have unique photo animation so you're not repeating the same animation over and over again all right so let's drop in our second photo from envato elements into this main sequence template as a background let's right click on our first background photo and copy then let's right click on this new background photo and let's paste the attributes in here in this new window. You just want to make sure that you're pasting the Gaussian blur. All right. Then from the project panel, let's right click on photo one sequence and let's duplicate it and let's rename it to photo two. Now double click to open up this photo two sequence and let's delete the current photo here because that's the photo from the first photo one. Now drop in our second photo from the project panel and from effects, search for crop and apply the crop effect to this photo just like before. And you can use the crop tool to crop it on the left, right, top or bottom, all depending on what you need until it fits within our Polaroid frame. And using the type tool, you can edit your caption as well. Now you can drag in the photo two sequence on top of the photo background here in the slideshow sequence. And just like we did before, you're going to use the motion controls to animate this photo. This time, let's make it a rotation of minus six. So it tilts in the opposite way as the first photo. And let's reduce the scale to 90. Now move the CTI to one second in and let's toggle animation on position, scale and rotation. And then let's pull back the CTI to the beginning. Let's rotate the image a bit and let's select motion and move the image off to the left this time. And let's also scale it down to zero. Now it moves from left to right over time and rotates into place. And again, let's lasso the second set of keyframes and make these keyframes ease in so it's more smooth. While we're at it, let's quickly set the out animation. So move the CTI to when you want the out animation to begin and let's hit the keyframe buttons and then let's rotate the image, move the image all the way off screen to the right and scale it back down to zero. So now we have our animation set, but to make the transition between the background images more smooth, let's right click between the two background images in the timeline and let's select the default transition cross dissolve. And you can see that it applied a cross dissolve transition. You can also zoom into your timeline and adjust the transition duration to make the cross dissolve longer or shorter. 
I personally like it when it's more gradual. You will see we have a basic little Polaroid slideshow and you can repeat this process for as many photos as you like. To top it off, of course, you can add in some production crate lens flares on top of the slideshow to give it more dynamism, but that's completely optional. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I read my comments and respond as soon as I can. If you become a gal patron at patreon.com slash premiergal, your questions will receive priority. So sign up and message me there. Finally, if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. YouTube will favor my educational content if you do, so many thanks in advance. And also be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are notified when I make new tutorials every week. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye!